you guys. I'm going to show you how I make ghee. Okay, so everybody sees ghee in the store, or maybe not necessarily, but um, it's pretty expensive. Basically what ghee is, is just clarified butter. And all you need to make it is some butter, a thick bottomed little pan like this, kind of like a saucepan. I like to use Revere Wear because I know it's thick on the bottom. Um, but you can use pretty much any kind of pot, as long as you uh, pay attention to it and stir it. The thick bottom is just safer. And a little flat spoon or a ladle and a strainer will be helpful. And I'll show you why later. And then you're going to need some jars to put it in. Oh, and um, some little bowls or containers for the stuff you don't want. I like to use these little um, yogurt jars here. As you can see, and they make good a good place to put the stuff that you don't want to keep in your ghee because um, well there's three different components to butter butter has the fat in it and then it also has some proteins and sugars in it still from the milk that it came from and what happens is um, the what they call the solids will either go down towards the bottom and sink or they will come up and kind of be on the top little layer here and that's why you need the the little uh, strainer or skimmer and so when this thing gets up to temperature I will show you what I'm talking about and um, yeah you guys will see what I mean okay so right now this is the kind of butter that we're using um, it's a uh, grass-fed Irish butter uh, it's pretty good. Um, I like it almost as much as I like the Kerrygold stuff, and it's okay. And right now we're getting it at Grocery Outlet pretty cheap. Um, it's December, and so from probably around the end of October until the end of January, butter is pretty cheap. Um, it's starting to kind of get past its prime date on some of these butters that we get on sale, but people don't care because they're baking with them and doing other things, so... Um, they just, uh, you know, buy them at a discount. And so that's what we do. We just buy a whole bunch of butter and then um, I just turn it into ghee and it will last indefinitely. Okay, so um, as you guys can see, it is boiling and that's what you want. You want it to kind of sit there and boil uh, for a little while. And you can see that there's like this foamy stuff on the top. And I don't know what part of the solid this is. It's probably got sugar in it too. And it's got, you know, proteins like whey and casein and stuff like that in it. And um, those are the things that spoil in butter. That's why butter goes bad. Now, if you don't want ghee, um, I also have a way to preserve butter um, by canning it. And I can uh, make another video on that if you guys are interested. But yeah, this... And I might just do that anyway, because somebody might be interested. Um, but yeah, this is the stuff that you want to skim off. You don't want to keep this stuff, because this is what makes ghee go rancid. Um, or butter, I should say, go rancid. And ghee will keep indefinitely. You could just put it in a jar with a lid on it, and as long as there's no dust or anything getting to it, it you don't ever have to put it in the refrigerator, unless you want to, um, and it lasts forever. And that's why... Um, in India thousands of years ago when there was no way to preserve things other than you know fermentation and things like that they uh, figured out how to make ghee so they can keep their butter longer and the longer you cook it the more kind of a nuttier flavor it's going to get and more of the solids that are heavier are going to go to the bottom um, and that's kind of what you want you kind of want it to um, to really be separated and so what I like to do is just kind of um, stir it on the top like I'm doing with this flat spoon. And you can do this with a ladle too, like a small ladle. And uh, what's, what's happening is some of these solids are sinking down to the bottom. So um, you're not going to have quite as much foam to skim off. And that's probably a good thing. Um, once you turn this down and it stops boiling as fast, more foam is going to come up to the top and that's okay. But the biggest particles are going to be stuck down in the bottom of the pan. And everybody wants to stir stuff when they're cooking it, and that's fine. But you don't want to scrape the bottom because then you'll disturb 
all the solids that sank down to the bottom and then you're going to have to start the process all over again because you just want the oil that's in the middle because that's all it is you're just skimming off pure fat at this point and fat is extremely stable and you know as as far as um shelf life goes so yeah and this is had this is like some of the best cooking oil that you could ever have and it has a really high smoke point because you're taking out all of the the proteins and the sugars and stuff that are left over in it <clears throat> okay now so i've let it kind of go for about i like to do it for about three to five minutes you can cook it longer if you want i just have this thing where i just don't want stuff to get burnt some people like their ghee to be a little bit strong i don't um but that's that's you know your preference you can experiment and see what what you like and so now that i turned it down some of these like you can see some of the foam like i was talking about before um coming back up to the surface so what you just do is you just skim it out with this thing and then i just take it over here and put it in it's hard to do this with a camera but i put it in one of these little jars it doesn't always want to go in so if it just stays in the skimmer it's fine and you just don't you just don't want it in your your final product um another thing i do too is i'll put this thing on i'll put it on one of the jars that i'm going to fill and then just kind of dump it in too that always helps but i like to try to get as much off of there as i possibly can and i just keep doing it like that Okay, you guys as you can see i got pretty much all of the foam off the top that's very important you want to get as much off the top as you can you need to scrape the sides of the pan a little bit as well as you can see there's like some crusty looking stuff on the side you want to try to get as much of that off as you possibly can um and that just saves you a lot of trouble um <laughs> believe me and so the next step is to uh, pour it in your jar. Now I did uh, one pound of butter, so that's going to be, you know, a 16 ounce jar still, even though you're taking out some of this stuff because you don't really have that much waste. And you want to leave a little headroom in your jar anyway. Okay, you guys, a little tip before you decide to um, put your ghee in the jar, make sure that you take a paper towel or something and wipe your strainer off really well. Um, that way the stuff doesn't go into the ghee that you want to keep. Uh, if not, then just get another strainer, um, that'll fit in your jar. Make sure that it's like kind of a, I don't know, I want to say like a fine mat mesh if you can. If not, then you might have to line it with like a coffee filter or a paper towel or something, which is not ideal because it takes a long time. Um, you could still do a pretty good ghee, um, without this kind of stuff, but it won't be as clarified and it might not last as long, but it's still going to be just as good for cooking. So you'll just have to use it faster. But yeah, just try to keep your, your utensils as clean as you can. Um, and so paper towels <laughs> really work well for that. Um, so yeah, you just um, basically you just stick your, your strainer on top if you can. And um, I like to use another jar to kind of hold it up like that. And then I take my pot and I do the best I can because it's gonna it's gonna make a mess so um I don't know if you could find a pot that's got like a, a spout on it it might make this step easier but basically you just pour it into the pot and um yeah I mean you pour it into the jar <laughs> sorry and then you're good to go <laughs> okay so I'm trying to get this from a better angle so you guys can see what I'm doing uh, also um this stuff is really hot, so it's important to keep it like on um, a trivet or something like that. Right now, I've got it sitting on top of my cast iron skillet thing here, so um, that should help. But yeah, it's it's going to be really hot. Um, so yeah, just be really careful when you do this. Don't let kids and pets in the kitchen because they could get burned. And see how nice and clear this ghee is? It's just going right in the jar. It's really nice. And just be really careful when you pour it because the solids will try to escape and get into your good stuff here. Um, <clears throat> and that's fine if you want to keep it butter, but we're trying not to keep it butter. We want ghee. So there we go. Almost there. And as you can see, there's like, there's the bottom, like the solids, the stuff that just sank down. 
That's the stuff that will make your ghee spoil. So you really don't want that in it. You know, taking this stuff out is what makes it last indefinitely. Um, and if you have to, stop at this point. You know, don't pour any further because even though there's still some good ghee inside of here, you you don't want to take the risk of getting these solids in 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 your in your stuff. Because even with the um, the strainer, a lot of times it's going to go right through. So what I do is I just kind of push the envelope a tiny tiny bit. And then when that stuff gets really close to the rim of the pot, I pull it back and I'll try it again. But if it doesn't, like see how it's starting to, I don't know if you guys can see that, but see how it's kind of starting to, to get towards the edge of the pot there. That means it's just going to go right in your thing. You don't want that. <laughs> so I just, I would prefer to just kind of like um, use this for something else or just throw it away because you don't want that stuff to spoil your ghee. So it's very important. You just, you want to keep that stuff out of there. Plus, um, if you use salted butter, or even if you don't use salted butter, this stuff tastes really, really salty after it's been separated. I don't know what it is, but it just, it just tastes foul to me. Um, and also like even with the unsalted stuff, um, it'll taste kind of sweet with like a whole bunch of salt. And to me, it just, it's gross. Um, some people use this as a seasoning or whatever, you know, cause they don't want to waste it. Some people probably feed it to their chickens or their animals. I don't know. Usually what I will do is I will just let it kind of solidify and then I will just, most of the time I just throw it in the garbage. Um, but yeah, because I just don't, I've tried to use it for things. I've tried putting it on steak. I've tried all kinds of stuff and to me it just tastes nasty. So, um, experiment to each your own but yeah this is pretty much for me when I make ghee it's a waste product if it's in the butter and it's still butter then it tastes good but this is like a concentrated thing now and so I don't know it's just a little bit too much so just a FYI so I just just put it in one of my little jars over there and then I just dispose of it later <clears throat> okay guys so as you can see my strainer did catch a little bit of stuff that tried to get in there and it's a good thing because I didn't want that in my ghee. I want my ghee to be nice and clear and pretty and as you can see it looks pretty good to me. Um, it almost looks like apple juice or something uh, and that's what you want and um, the longer you cook it the darker it's going to get. Also if you use grass fed butter like we try to do it's going to be more of a bright yellow color. Um, if you use just regular butter, it's fine, but it's not going to be as golden, um, as this. And it's still just as good. It still tastes good. Um, and like I say, it's got a high smoke point, so it's really good for cooking, really good in your recipes. I've even put it on stuff that I would normally put butter on and it still tastes like butter and it's still really good. Um, so, uh, I highly recommend it, especially if you live off grid, um, without too much refrigeration and or if you live in a van or a tiny, tiny house, this is a handy way to um, extend the life of your butter. Or like if you have um, dairy animals and you have a whole bunch of butter and you don't have anybody to sell it to or give it to or you just want to keep it all for yourself, um, making ghee is one of the, the best things you can do with it. Okay, so um, I just put the lid on that jar and I can set it up on a shelf now and it's going to last a really, really long time. So there you go. Alright you guys, so that's how I make ghee. Hopefully it gives you um, a couple of good ideas. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Um, I guess I will show you guys how to can butter on the next one. Or something like that. So uh, yeah, stay tuned and we'll be doing some more fun stuff in the kitchen. Because, well, there's nothing but snow outside. <laughs>